Hey, it's Marella Minnelli, and today I'm going to be doing a black box dye color correction. Our overall goal is to remove this black box dye and get her back to a really rich natural brunette shade using all Kenra color. Now let's go ahead and get started. So this is my model. She colored her hair with black box dye about six months ago. And as you can see, she's got some new growth along with one other band and then this black box dye. And it was specifically nice and easy. Now there was nothing nice or easy about removing this black box dye, but our overall goal was to get her to a natural brunette shade, something to blend in her gray that was going to be low maintenance and that she can just touch up every few months. I knew I was going to have to prep her with a color remover first, which is why I decided to go in with Malibu C CPR and prepping her with Kenra Professional Clarifying Shampoo. I also followed up with Color Disruptor from Malibu C and here's how I did it. I started out with two cleanses using Kenner Professional Clarifying Shampoo, specifically on those mids and ends and just avoiding the scalp area. Since we're gonna be doing more color services later, I didn't want to agitate her skin or scalp area. So I just made sure to really work through and using my hands to agitate those mids and ends. So that way it's clarifying shampoo can remove any surface buildup and basically kind of pre-soften it for the Malibu CPR. So now I'm gonna layer that right on top and really work it in section by section. Again, putting that Malibu CPR on just the mids and ends. And I'm gonna process her under the dryer for a full 30 minutes. Once that was done, I took her back to the shampoo bowl, did another clarifying shampoo using Kenra Clarifier. And then after I rinsed this out, I decided to layer in the color disruptor. Now I felt this was necessary because we had lots of layers of black box dye and I processed this on damp hair for an additional 30 minutes. So this took in total a little over an hour just for this black box dye color remover, giving me a much better canvas to allow for my lightener to do its job. For her sectioning, I'm using her natural part, which is about right down the middle. That's gonna actually change once we get towards the front and I do the highlights, and then from the apex down behind the ear. You can now see that band softened a lot and we got her ends to about a good level two, level three. So for this project, I'm gonna be using Kendra Professional Beyond Bond Lightener. Now the reason why I'm using this lightener is because she does have pretty fine hair and we just did two color remover processes beforehand. So I want something that's going to give her hair a little bit more structure for those inner and outer bonds. I'm gonna be mixing this up one to two mixing ratio with 20 volume developer. And to get started diffusing this line of demarcation, I'm gonna start from the bottom and work my way up. So I'm gonna be working with pretty wide sections but also really deep weaves here and I'm going to tease. Now the reason why I'm using this technique is again to diffuse this line of demarcation and I want the most blend possible. Keep in mind our end result or our goal is to get her to a really natural looking brunette shade that can grow out really easily, be super low maintenance, and she doesn't want a harsh line of demarcation. So that's why I decided to go in with this technique because long term she just wants to be able to come in here and there for some glazes to blend in her gray. She's not super concerned with covering her gray she just wants a blend so I thought this technique was gonna be perfect for her so that way we can brighten up those ends blend in the grays at the top and then we can see her every six to eight weeks for an all-over glaze now some of the tools that I'm using are of course my Fermar brushes I love the power painter for this particular technique and I'm also using my Ku board this is the really extra long wide one and I just like it because it pushes up those little teased areas really really easily these foils are also from Fermar making my work flow be really quick if I was using more traditional foils I would have to use smaller sections and smaller foils so that's kind of why I just like using tools that are gonna make me work 
a lot more efficiently. Now, in a lot of my other videos, I do share the TZ light without the tease, but with this particular client, I wanted to create that tease because I wanted the ultimate diffusion here and I'm taking really deep sections here when I'm weaving. And so for that reason, I wanted this to be a lot more rooted. So when I'm actually teasing, it creates more of a rooted effect, more for those mids and ends, which is exactly where that black box dye is. And another key thing that when you're gonna be doing this technique is to make sure you're combing through the lightener if your section feels a little kind of thick. You could even go in with your hands and really work through this product, but it's very imperative that you get both sides of the hair when you're painting in the lightener. Now, once I actually got all of her foils in, I actually did go back and reapply just because I wanted to double check my work and my application. Now, you'll also notice that all of my sections in the back are horizontal and this it has a purpose. So if you haven't watched my other hair tutorial on the placements of your hair foils and the effects they create, I highly recommend you check out that video because I think it will bring a lot of clarity as to why I decided to use horizontals. Basically, if you haven't watched the video, that is basically sharing that horizontals can give you a lot of diffusion towards the back. And since we're trying to break up a line of demarcation and I wanted the most blend for this, horizontals was the best option. I'm actually gonna finish up this back section with just two more foils, but they do get a little closer together so the subsections aren't as wide as the very, very bottom side. And since we were able to brighten up that black box die on that underside and get her to a good level three. I wasn't too concerned about that still showing through on top of these brown highlights that we're gonna make. But the overall goal here with the lift is I want to get her past that orange phase because I don't want to have to correct any orange tones because I want this to look as natural as possible. So I'm really aiming for a level nine here, but I'll be really happy with a level eight as well because I feel like I can still control that, but definitely wanna get past that level seven for a natural brunette shade. Now for the front, I'm gonna be doing diagonal back sections. And again, the reason for this is because I wanna create the most natural fall and typically, my client wears her hair a little bit towards her face. So this is gonna be the most diffused natural fall for her. So that's what I want to replicate. I'm still taking really deep weaves here. I'm not too concerned about creating a money piece or anything like that. We want her highlights to not really look like highlights. We want to add dimension. So really soft, natural highs and lows. And again, a rich brunette shade. I'm gonna continue on adding in my lightener in the same exact fashion, still diagonal back all the way until I get to the top. So this is still split down the middle. And if you remember from the very beginning, her part was just kind of like jaggedy and I left it that way. I did, wasn't concerned about making it super perfect. I almost like adding in a purposeful zigzag parting for that centerpiece because this is gonna aid in the diffusion that I'm trying to create. So less than perfect lines results in a more diffused end result, which is exactly what we're trying to do. So lots of uneven pieces. And then as I get towards the very, very top here, my subsections become shorter or less wide. So just kind of keep that in mind. She doesn't wear her hair up. So overall, I wasn't too concerned with the underside. I wanted more extra dimension towards that top. I have a total of five foils on each side and then I'm processed her for a good solid 60 minutes and I made sure to reapply and just kind of keep an eye on it. And I did this all room temperature with the 20 volume. Keep in mind that Kenner Color does not recommend heat with any of their color products except for the Kenra Color Creatives. But for any type of lightning services, you just wanna go low and slow and process room temperature. And honestly, I'm obsessed with these results. If she wanted to be a blondie, we would have had a really great time maybe just doing a shadow root and a toner on these ends, but we wanted to do something a lot more low maintenance. So brunette shade, it was. 
We decided to use 5N at a one-to-one -one mixing ratio with nine volume developer. And then for her mids and ends, I used 5B at a one-to-two mixing ratio with nine volume developer in demi-permanent hair color. I applied her N shade right onto that root area and brought it down to where the highlighted pieces were at. So I wanted to be able to basically bring that down just enough so that way I can blend the N into the B seamlessly. I chose the N series because the N in Kenra Color has a balance of all shades, meaning that you're gonna have the most natural end result and the best gray blending slash coverage. Even though we're not gonna get a ton of coverage, you'll see that it does a phenomenal job of camouflaging her natural gray hairs beautifully. So once I get this on, I'm gonna immediately start to apply my 5B shade onto those mids and ends. I do this by combing down each section and then applying that 5B right onto that line of demarcation and then using my hands to further blend. And as soon as I get this on, on the very, very last section, I'm gonna process this at room temperature for just 20 minutes. Now keep in mind, there's so many different types of colors that you can do and toners that you can apply. Another great shade for her probably would have been 5N and blending it into 6B. So it's really just kind of up to you once you create a nice even canvas, but I think we definitely achieved that. We pulled her blonde hair to a solid level eight. We got some pieces of nine. So this was just a fantastic canvas to break up all of that black that she had going on. And once we were done processing this, I shampooed and conditioned her out with Lux shampoo and conditioner from Kenra Professional. I ended up styling her with Kenra Platinum blow dry spray, some volume mousse, and finished her off with a little bit of texturizing taffy just to kind of tame the flyaways, and then styled her with a one and one quarter inch barrel iron. And look at this side by side. You can tell a huge difference. Got rid of that black box dye, diffused a line of demarcation, and left her with a much more natural shade that's gonna be super low maintenance. So I'll see her in about eight weeks, just to touch up that root area with the five and in demi permanent and then just reglaze those ends as needed and i think this looks really rich and hydrated and has a beautiful finish you just really cannot tell that there was black box dye before for the full list of products and colors used, check out the description down below so I really hope you enjoyed this hair tutorial and if you did, please give this video a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe and be sure to check out my other hair tutorials right here on this channel and I will see you next time.